Evening everybody, Monday night, uh, 8.15, so we're, or 8.16, we got it close, uh, so we're going to get rolling with uh, socializing tonight. I know this is a subject that I get messaged uh, a lot about, and right on cue, my dog wants to come in. Really? Shiloh? Come on, buddy. Oh, his feet are cold. Come on, buddy. You all right, pal? Oh, you get all cold. Limping. Hey, Linda. All right, he's walking. Anyways, uh, poor Shiloh was cold outside. I didn't think it was going to be like that, so it's been a few minutes. But anyways, you guys, obviously uh, we're going to talk about socializing dogs tonight. If there is anything that uh, I can help you with, please don't hesitate. Uh, I'm certainly more than willing to, to help you out and give you some uh, advice as well. So it's good people are piling right on. And as usual, we always look for a lot of participation or questions or comments, anything along those lines. So uh, to get right to it, I, again, I know this is a subject that everybody wants to learn about or they know somebody who has a dog that isn't very well socialized so I just kind of thought I'd go through the steps of what we do with the dogs at work uh, with how we socialize them if we have one that I'm, you guys I'm not gonna throw out the 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 word the term aggressive dog because if you have an aggressive dog then you shouldn't be doing stuff at home on your own or trying it with your friends dogs it's just if you have an aggressive dog you need to get some professional help wherever you are. So uh, I just have to preface that. Now, I'm saying maybe you have a shy or nervous dog, scared dog, skittish dog, or maybe you have a dog that's way too forward and too excited to meet other dogs. <clears throat> There's also a dog that's just kind of curious too. So we're kind of in that realm of everything of those are the kind of dogs we're going to talk about tonight. Um, Again, aggression is something that you need professional help with, so I'm not going to sit here and tell you what to do with an aggressive dog because that can get yourself into a lot of trouble. Um, so, really when it comes down to it, guys, the first thing that, obviously, we have a, a controlled environment. So, to me, that's probably the biggest aspect of being able to help a dog like that. You know, a dog park is not the place to go for something like this. That is a very uncontrolled environment. Um, jo George Cockrell, a long time 40 year trainer, I've attended a couple of his workshops, uh, said it best, if you wanna go to the dog park, go ahead, just leave your dog at home. Uh, and I I mean, that, that's, uh, I think that hits, hits home with a lot of people because there's just not a lot of good that comes out of it. Um, other than if you have that click of people that you can go with every week, I think is good. Uh, at a certain time and you know all the dogs and everybody gets along. That's when I think it's beneficial. Random time, random dogs, not so much. So I, I think that's really, you know, key to uh, part of it. So now, how do we get going with these dogs? All right, let's say we have a dog that's a little bit too excited um, and a little bit too much. So for us, we always start on one side of our gate, right, with the dog. All the other dogs are on the inside of the gate so from there to me we want to see how curious the dog is how intense the dog is you know and that's when we're going to observe body language ears mouth eyes um, tail how it holds its body posture so guys if this dog is really tense um, they're gonna be really stiff obviously but something to watch with the eyes not many people talk about eyes their pupils will get very dilated uh, to the point where it looks like, you know, when we get our eyes tested at the eye doctor, or used to, you get that, that dye put in your eyes and it makes your pupils look huge. Dogs will look that way when they get really intense. And it can be a good thing, can be play, but at this point, when we're talking about socializing dogs, um, it's really important to kind of keep an eye on that. Uh, we also look for the nose twitch, meaning is it curious to sniff a little bit, right? Um, if it's not, and if it's just all eyes, We've got to be wary of that. So you guys, there's so many things in the beginning when we're on one side of the gate, me and the dog, and all the other dogs on the other, are on the other side. So from there, if we get a good vibe, or if we see the dogs a little forward, uh, you guys have seen us carry those 
the sticks around, the, the dressage whips, we may take the butt end, like the handle end of that, and just touch the dog. No more than this. Because we just want to see how sensitive the dog is. Uh, hey, Daniela. And I think that's important because if, if, if we can do this and the dog turns and looks at me, great. The dog's not that intense. If we can do this and the dog does nothing, okay, then we kind of know what we're dealing with. Um, so I think touch is important. The other thing that we'll do is we can take that, um, and you're gonna hear me talk about this. We always get questions about what we do with the, the, the dressage whips, and, and I'm going to give you examples as I go along here of what we do. So <clears throat> another one we may do is take that whip and crack it on the ground next to the dog. And I'm not talking about this huge like Indiana Jones type whip or crack. I'm just talking about taking the loose end of it and hitting the ground or hitting the floor next to the dog. Again, I'm testing that intensity of, of the dog maybe being way overly excited to meet everybody. And you guys, that helps me. This is all information that I can take in and, I, and between experience and um, knowledge and vibe and all that, then I, then I have an ability to go, okay, I know where this dog is at. The dog can't turn and look at me and go, hey, yo, Ian, I'm at level 8 out of 10 with my intensity right now, so um, you may want to chill me out. <laughs> we don't have that ability. So it's really important to do all these kind of tests, see where the dog is, because if I just walk through that gate and meet all the other dogs and I don't know what I'm hanging on to, that's when stuff goes sideways. I mean, sideways. So I think it's really important to, again, go through all these tests first to find out. So... Uh, good, Tiffany. And you guys, I think what I'm going to do um, is um, I'm probably just going to go right along with how we do this. And then I'm going to just kind of scroll back and get to your questions. So I apologize. Don't think I'm ignoring you right now. Um, but I think as I get this, I don't want to break this up too much with how we go about this. So I'm just going to go through my whole spiel. Um, and then I'll scroll back and get to your questions. So I, just because I, I have this process in my head. And I don't want to keep going back to, this isn't like pointers here and there. So anyways, that's how we'll do it. So I'm at the gate, okay? Um, again, we take the whip, we can hit it on the, the floor next to, um, next to the dog to see, again, how loud do I really have to, or how hard do I hit the floor to really get the dog's attention? Again, that gives me feedback for that intensity. And I think that's important as well. So you guys, if you have a dog like this that's overly excited or um, let's just say an excited dog okay you guys you can carry a walking stick all right and you'll notice if you take that walking stick and you just hit the ground with it a couple of times um, your dog may turn and look at you and be like hey what was that then you know what kind of uh, intensity that dog is in uh, you know if you're hitting the ground really hard and the dog could care less and it's focused on something else then you know that you are not in the forefront of what that dog is doing and that's when that intensity is taking over. So I think it's important to kind of be aware of that. Or this time of year, you can take a ski pole if you're in the north, do the same type of thing. So now it's time to get the dog inside the gate. Let's say everything, all the feedback has been okay so far. But for me, for this, let's say this example, this dog is just a little too excited. Uh, if it's too excited, I might take some more time and chill it out before I walk through the gate. But let's say we're good right now. Now leash in one hand, I've got the dressage whip in the other, okay? As we walk through uh, the gate, uh, this is where, if we're bringing in a dog like this, I wouldn't say it's like all hands on deck with, us, with all of us at work, but it's pretty close. So I've usually got two trainers that are creating a bubble uh, for me around the gate, again with space. So what they are doing is, um, hold on. Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> that was pretty good. It's like a really long toothpick and I just flung it and it went whoosh. So anyways, um, so what the other trainers are doing, this is my pretend dressage whip tonight. Uh, they're creating space with this. So they're touching the ground with it in front of dogs uh, and moving them back again to create space for me to come in with the other dog behind him. So as soon as I walk through that gate, uh, it's really important that I'm very aware of what dogs are around me, um, and also our movement is important. I have to keep moving forward. That's all there is to it. If I stop, uh, that brings 
all dogs in uh, to this one dog. You've probably seen episodes of The Dog Whisperer where Caesar would bring in a dog and have all the other dogs converge around it. Um, I used to do that, and I think there's a time and a place for it, um, but I'm not Caesar, so I'm not going to do it that way. Um, so to me, it's, it's moving and it's movements. You guys have probably seen us almost do laps of other videos. Um, so what's going to happen here is maybe for a lap or two, we are actually going to make it so no dogs are allowed to walk up to the one that I'm walking. They're not allowed to sniff. The dog that I'm walking is not allowed to do much. Um, again, dealing with that over, over excitement. Now, again, this is why we're all carrying these, okay? Because this, this over excitement stuff can get that dog into a lot of trouble, a lot of trouble. Because if he approaches another dog in that state of mind where he's super jittery and super excited and gets in another dog's personal space, that can be a problem, okay? So that's when I have to slow it down a little bit. I may slow it down with this on the floor next to it. Um, I may slow it down with a snap. I may slow it down with a hey or, a ch or whatever correction sound. And I think that's important that we don't allow this dog to just charge up to another dog and try to sniff it. Um, because that's when, a lot, again, a lot of bad things can happen. And we're working on this dog's social skills. So, you know, again, I'm not looking for a ton the first go around. I feel like it's kind of a feeling out time uh, for this dog, for me, what I feel, what I see. One thing I look for, for a dog that's overly excited, is curiosity. So I'm going back to that same little, like, rabbit nose twitch uh, that I was hopefully seeing... Uh, on the other side of the gate. That shows me curiosity. Curiosity is a different part of the brain than if a dog is overly excited. The dog is overly excited, eyes are blown up, pupils might be blown up, and the dog is using all eyes and not the nose. So I know that if that dog starts to sniff a little bit, we're on the right track. And because we're in a big group of dogs, I can't be like, you know, the dog is sniffing and go, good boy, good job using your nose. Because guess what? I'm trying to keep this controlled environment with all these other dogs around. And if, I'm, if I keep going, good boy, good boy, good boy, it's going to bring everybody's intensity up. And if I already have an overly excited dog and I get everybody's intensity up, guess what? It's chaos. I mean, it's, it's way too much. So for me, um, I think getting that dog to move around, and who knows how long it may take, you guys. I mean, there's a number of different things that can happen. I could get that dog in there and it just gets really wound up. If it gets really wound up to the point where I'm having a hard time controlling the dog, then we may just sit still in one spot. I'm going to make the dog sit, whether it's a sit command or a snap of the fingers or whatever it is, a little touch on the bottom with my fingertips. We need to sit in one spot. That's going to slow that dog down, not more laps. It'll pick it back up, okay? Um, and we've had to do that with some, with some dogs because they need to learn that when you get into a group of dogs, you need to chill out a little bit. You can play. It'll be time for play, but not right now when you're first meeting everybody. And I think that's important to remember, you guys, is that when your dogs first meet another dog, they don't have to play to make it a good time, okay? I was just joking around with somebody today that dogs don't, go nose, don't have to go nose to nose or nose to tail to make a good interaction, okay? If they are 20 feet apart, and nothing ever happens, they don't get close to each other, they've had an interaction, they can go their separate ways, all right? Um, and here's the thing, you guys, and I use this exact analogy today. If a dog can find a dirty diaper inside of a luggage bag, inside of a luggage store, okay, then there's a pretty good chance that that same dog can smell another dog 20 feet away in the wide open room or, or outside, okay? So think about that. They don't have to smell. I feel like too many people are walking their dog right up to another dog going, hey, look at this guy. He's so cute. And don't you guys want to be friends and all that kind of stuff? That's garbage. Absolute garbage. You're putting way too much pressure on your dog and the other dog. And it can cause problems. And I think, I think the bad outweighs the good in, in that kind of an example. I think it really does. So to go back to what I'm looking for, I look for that curiosity. If he gets too wound up, we're sitting in one spot. We're going to chill out for a while until I feel like he's relaxed and that intensity has come down. I'm not going to do anything else other than make sure that he stays sitting next to me. If he gets up, he gets back into a sit. 
Doesn't matter. If he gets up eight times, he goes into a sit eight times. I'm not giving in, okay? I'm not giving him any corrections. We're hanging on, we're hanging tight, like nothing at all. Plus, me doing that starts to develop a relationship of, hey, when we're in here, you need to follow my lead. That's really, that's really what it's about, okay? You follow my lead, you'll get what you want, everything will be cool, you can have a great time, okay? Now, let's say that's, let's say that's session number one, okay? I might end it after 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever, end on a good note, dog goes, gets put away uh, up in the kennel for, you know, a couple hours. We bring him out again, I go through the same process at the door, at the gate, and the same thing, walking in, start moving around. Hopefully I'd see some improvement now because I've tired him out from the first session, and now we're in the second session, okay? So, what we try to do here, um, again, if the dog is starting to show me some curiosity with that nose twitching, um, then if his nose starts twitching and he's not too intense, now I'm going to go from leading him around the, the, in the social area to shadowing him a little bit. Denise from New Hampshire. Awesome. Um, so I'm going to start shadowing him a little bit because he's showing me a good state of mind and he's showing me that he's making a good decision. Now, if he walks up to this other dog and starts sniffing, I'm pretty much going to go one, two three and then I either gonna snap my fingers or make my sound is a sh sound because I first saw a dog whisper and it just stuck okay so but what I want to do is I want to be able to create a sound that will break that state of mind okay so where the dog goes huh and I can either go let's go I can either pull on the leash a little bit and say you know uh, I mean not like verbally say anything but just a little pull on the leash and be like hey Whatever kind of comes to mind, but you don't need to get into the hey come here boy good boy all that kind of stuff Nothing in this We that we want to do we don't want to raise the intensity by any means. This is about keeping things chill Good interactions. Let's have some fun. You get to you get to meet a lot of dogs so Again, he's left that dog now. He's gonna come back to another one again I'm gonna give him the one two three make my sound and I want him to look at me if I can start to get him to listen to a correction sound, okay, and be able to break him from um, lingering there too long sniffing, then I know we're, we are headed in the right direction. And it doesn't matter if that dog gives, me, gives that to me the first time that we have that session, the second, the third, whatever. As long as I'm seeing progression, then I'm good with that. Baby steps. All dogs are, you know, are going to learn at different speeds. So, you know... To me, what are those good interactions look like? The timing has a lot to do with it. When I say the one, two, three, because three seconds is, is good, maybe four. Um, it also depends on the other dog. I mean, you know, if it's a dog that we just we just know and it's not a good mix, we're gonna cut it early, like enough. No, no need to go any further. Um, if it's a dog that we know is pretty content dog, we'll give it that one, two, three okay time to move along because you guys what happens is is if the dog that I'm working with comes up and sniffs two three four five guess what this dog starts to move and guess what because he's moving away this one's starting to follow six seven eight right and then what happens the dog that, that is being sniffed might turn and look at that guy and be like hey enough of this right you might get that look where the dog just turns around and gives that guy that dog, other dog eye contact and says, you know, enough. Or you may get the, like, the, I really need to get away. And then that picks up the intensity. So we call these long handshakes uh, in the dog business because it gets weird. Okay? Try going up the next time you meet somebody and shake their hand for about 30 seconds straight. And tell me what kind of looks you get from them. Okay? Because I think that uh, you'd probably get some pretty weird looks. And I think that um, it's, it's just, it's really good to be conscious of that kind of thing. So three seconds is good, especially for that overly excited dog. You know, if you have that nervous or skittish dog and that one walks up and sniffs, three, four, five, and then just a little sound because that nervous or skittish dog doesn't need a big loud noise to be like, hey, enough. Um, they need a, a much softer sound because they're more sensitive. 
So, um, you know, eventually that's what I want to build on. That's kind of our process over time of being able to socialize. Now, if this dog is stuck, the one I'm working with, sniffing, two, three, four, I make my sound, nothing. That's when I take our dressage whip and I hit the floor next to it because I need to snap this dog out of it, okay? Um, and I might go progressively louder until I get the dog's attention. And when I do, he's looking at me like, hey, at that time I'm going to give him a little leash uh, pull towards me. And we're talking minimal. At this time, it won't take much because we've already lowered that intensity. So I'm trying to teach that dog that you can move in for a few seconds. And then when I say so, you need to come towards, come back towards me. And we just repeat that process, you guys. Now, the difference is, is that we usually have a different group of dogs every day. So we can build on that. This dog has a chance to meet new dogs every day. And I think that's important, too, because the more exposure, the more body language the dog sees, the difference... In the different size uh, dogs, um, all that kind of stuff. So it just adds up. Now, you take a dog that's been with us for two weeks and we're doing this every day, we can make some strides. Um, but again, this is a controlled environment and that's the best way to learn. I mean, look, uh, you know, if you look at pretty much anything that you learn or um, think about any professional athlete, when they practice, they're in a controlled environment. You know, um, I mean, it, it, it is what it is. You got to practice, practice, practice until you're in that real world scenario and then you have the skills. And then so does the client too, because obviously we're going to walk them through stuff like that. So it's super duper important um, to, to be able to build on that beyond what we can do with a dog. So like I said, that's our process for socializing dogs that are that don't have great social skills. Tonight I'm talking about the ones that are a little bit overly excited um, that we need to settle down a little bit. You can use the same process for the dog that's skittish or nervous, but just do it a lot less, um, a little less intense. Take a little bit more time. Um, be a little softer with the dog. Um, it's, it's the same type of test. You just got to be, I mean, obviously in my position, I've got to be aware of what I'm working with before I can just barge right into a room full of dogs. Um, so that's where I kind of go through these intensity, just like observations to find out what I'm dealing with then we can build on it. We know which direction. Do I need to kind of give this dog a little bit of confidence or do I need to chill this dog out a little bit? So, um, but it's fun and I love doing that. I really do, without a doubt. So that is my spiel on that. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I know there's some here that I'll get to. So um, let me go back to, it looks like Astrid, which I think, if I remember, she came to our celebration of dogs. I got two for you. Rex is great with other dogs, but he acts up. Crazy excited trying to get the other dogs when he is on a leash. Actually tends to scare other dog owners. We redirect him as much as possible. We have Rex and two cats, but we are still unable to do introductions. His prey drive goes from zero to 60 when he sees them. Um, and that's intensity as well. So that goes back to the same concept that I was just talking about, where if he's practicing intensity you know, a lot, he's going to live it a lot. Um, I heard, a, I, I heard a trainer say this uh, in my podcast, uh, the most recent podcast with Lynn Bokey. Practice makes permanent. Uh, hey, Ashley. So if you guys think about it, practice makes permanent. Okay? If you practice with your dog to be excited all the time, that's going to happen all the time. Okay? If you practice petting your dog all day, every day, that's going to become permanent. Uh, it, it just it is what it is. So... I want to chill that dog out all day. It needs to get worked a little bit, rest, work, rest throughout the day. It needs to live a different state of mind um, and be able to focus on something different rather than repeating that state of mind of there goes the cat or there goes somebody across the street. So I, I think, you know, looking from that perspective, Astrid, I know we talked about training, but I'd probably suggest that um, moving forward uh, without a doubt. Um, Tiffany, good. I'm glad you're happy I'm doing this. Uh, Aveda Salon, I need to find a muzzle that fits my blocky head. Baskerville doesn't fit. Any suggestions? Looking for a basket type. Um, so all we use is Baskerville. I would probably just start searching Amazon um, to go from there. Um, you can also try PetEdge.com or maybe Ryan's Pet Supply. 
uh, or petsupplies.com. Um, I'm trying to think of where else you can probably look. You just got to make sure, like you said, it's the basket type. Jafco, I think it's J-A-F-C-O. I'm not sure how much of a uh, how much room they have to be able to open and close their mouth, but that's that's a good one as well. Um, let me see where we are. Anna, what if you can't break the state of mind with sound? One of our pups is deaf. Um, if you can't break the state of mind, and that's when you use touch, okay? Um, get like a ski pole just to be able to touch them, um, or a walking stick, broom handle. You just got to be super careful though, because you just don't want them to become wary of every time you got this thing carrying around that that you know it means something bad. So you can also just touch. I'm saying touch, not a seizure touch, just a touch with your foot, okay? Just a touch, foot. Shoulder of the dog, touch, not touch, okay? Um, for the deaf dog. Uh, let's see. Once dogs have met and are apart for a while, then reunite, will they need to be reintroduced? Do they remember each other? Uh, Robin, it depends on how much of a time frame apart. I, you know, they're going to know through scent, and body, scent energy and body language who they are so if they split up for two hours and came back together it may take a little bit but then they'll probably recognize um what happens or who they who, who they are i mean linda i used to have a dog aggressive dogs two out of three now i just have pj we walk all the time we walk at the golf courses the pj's always on leash not aggressive but people always let their dogs run right up to them i'm on lookout with the three second rule but what or how should I handle these unknowns running up to us? If you're on the golf course, start take take your golf club and start waving it in the air, or take the handle part of your uh, or the club head and point it at the dog. You need to create space. Um, that's all there is to it, because the dogs like that shouldn't you know. N nobody wants another dog charging up to them while they're walking around with their dog structured on a leash. So. Again, you guys, the, the, the dressage whip that we use creates space more than anything all day, every day. It creates space and um, snaps a dog out of a certain state of mind with usually a hit on the ground right next to it. So, uh, Tiffany, I have a very, very aggressive dog. He even tries to attack the TV if he sees another animal on it. Can you do a session on aggressive behavior? Thank you. Uh, Tiffany, I can. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, definitely work on it for you. Uh, Denise, where's the best place to introduce my aggressive dog to a new dog? A neutral place or my dog's house? Um, I would suggest that definitely at least a neutral place, Denise, but if your dog is truly aggressive, as in it, wanna rips and tear, it wants to rip and tear into another dog, then you need training. I, you guys, when it comes to aggressive dogs, it's, it's very difficult for me to sit here and say, if you have an aggressive dog, you gotta do X, Y, and Z. It goes way beyond that because there's so many factors that I don't know what's going on in your house and your environment and all that kind of stuff. I know I'm probably going to sound like a broken record and you know when I say you need professional help and you guys I'm not saying it's got to be me. You, you know what I mean? It, I, I, please don't mistake my advice to you as trying to advertise or market myself. I don't care if you are right around the corner from me or if you are um, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Like, you need you need to seek out professional help. R on rare occasions, will it get better without professional help? Okay, I, I I can't stress that enough. So, when it comes to aggressive type dogs, it's it's very difficult for me to give advice. I mean, I I feel awkward giving advice for somebody that has a truly aggressive dog because it just runs way deeper. It really does. Um. Kim, the dressage whip is really good at just extending your arm for space control. It's too bad it's perceived as something different. Yes, everybody thinks that we beat dogs with it. Everybody thinks that we take it and just crack them over the back all day, every day, and we hit them and over the head and that we beat dogs and that it's awful and that that's all that we do, right? I mean, it's terrible. Um, but you know what? The good far outweighs the bad as far as what, what can be done with it. Um, and perception and I appreciate when people ask you know we I put out a lot of videos and people always ask about it you guys I'm not here to hide anything you see people with it if I wanted to hide it I wouldn't show it to anybody on video but it's how we use it all right and it's what we can create with that 
and it's how we can socialize these types of dogs in a controlled environment that allows it to happen, okay? So, you guys, that's my spiel on tonight. Might as well keep it short and sweet. Uh, lots of information here. Feel free to go back and look it over again. If you have any other questions, just jump on here. Um, obviously, I get the notification if something pops up that, uh, you know, if there's a new question or somebody commented or something like that. So don't be afraid. I'll, I'll certainly get back to it. Uh, Tiffany, do you know of anyone in the Virgins, Vermont area? I could call to train my aggressive dog. Um, Tiffany, I know you're not that far from Burlington. I don't know of anybody in Virgins, but that doesn't mean there isn't anybody that's good down there. Um, so, yeah, I'm not exactly sure who's down there and what would be near you. Um, but anyways, and, and listen, why don't, <laughs> my dog's got to go out again. See this? Maddie, you're not going to say hi, are you? She's like, nope, I got to pee. It's my last trip out tonight. There you go from Kim. I, I don't know Emily Lewis, but give it a shot. Um, yeah, that's all. That's, see, that's what's great about this. You can get some information from other people too. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I thought this was something that we haven't really touched on before. Uh, and there's lots of good information. So again, if you have any other questions um, afterwards, Feel free, you know. Uh, Justin, I'll train them. I live in Alabama, and they will come back knowing how to hunt and track also. Well, you never know who you're going to run into. All right, you guys, have a great night. Uh, we will see you next week. Also, you guys, I got a great look at her. She's in already. Maddie, Maddie. <laughs> She's going to bed. Maddie. She doesn't have room to turn her body around. Maddie, come here. You say hi to everybody. You say hi. Yes. Yes. All right, you guys. Uh, next Monday, 8.15. Uh, thank you for everybody who showed up. We had a good turnout tonight. Uh, I'll be back. Like I said, i got a great lineup for podcasts coming up, too. So search your podcast app for Vermont Dog Trainer Show. Tons of information, you guys. I've gone through 13 states already of trainers. Um, and I got another four different states lined up. So good stuff. Tons of information. You guys have a good night. We'll see you next week.